Welcome to the call today. I want to open the floor up to ask you guys, because I'm sure, because it's been it's been 30 days since the last time we spoke. So if you guys have questions in the chat, burning, burning things, decisions that are impending, um, things you're unsure about, strategies that you need to validate, or even just a, a verbal high five, please put it in the chat. I'll go on, I'll go on from top to bottom and then we'll rock and roll from there. Mr. Pittman, question that leans on philosophical meaning of life side. What's <laughs> sure, let's uh let's let's rock in. Let's do it. So in your podcast, you talk yeah. a lot about the um like how happiness is like the equation of like wants versus needs. And like I had a million cash in the bank, but I was living off of 30 grand or something like that. And so yeah. like were you have you always just been predisposed to wanting less or is that like a skill that you learn? Cause most people are like, yo, I want to make millions and millions of dollars so that I can get more. At least that's kind of like where I was, the direction I was going until I like started listening to you. And now I'm thinking like, am I dumb? You know? And so I'm just curious to know, like if that was just like a natural, like predisposition that you had, or if you like got to a certain point to where you're like, okay, now that I've experienced more, I want less. Like how did that all kind of, play out because i think it would help me become more happy man that's a loaded question it has probably been what that question has been the the primary thing that's occupied my mind space in the last 18 months and so for context i don't talk as much publicly about what we do but like between our all of the companies that we own we're doing just under two million a week like i don't need to take these calls right i do these things because like they're the few things that i derive joy from like I love, you know, like I like hearing Peter's updates. I like hearing Patrick knowing that he's he's he's, he's moving, you know, forward in the chiropractor business. And Jason's finally getting his fucking lead gen uh, <laughs> set up. And Mac, you're doing your own dance thing, which is sick. You know what I mean? And Michael, I know I remember your first sale. Like that that is where I find meaning. And so I think first off, if you redefine the term from happiness, which is which is based on outside circumstances, you are happy as a reaction. Joy comes from within, which means that I can be sad and sorrowful and filled with joy. You can mourn and be joyful because joyful is, an exp- is how you choose to experience the circumstances. So first I would redefine the word that you're shooting for, right? Um, the second thing is, is asking like, but why, right? And so a lot of us want to make money because we're like, I want to, you know, I, and, and, then, and then when we talk publicly, it's like, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave an impact, blah, 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 right? All that stuff. I want to help people. But the reality is that everything that you do that is external achievement is ephemeral. And what it means is it literally only exists on the physical plane. And that physical plane is temporary, which means it will end, which means that all of the achievements and all the things that you're doing on this plane, literally by definition, will have no lasting impact. And so if it means that nothing that you do, any, all the things that you accomplish and all the things, or rather the wealth that you accumulate will eventually disappear, it changes the perspective somewhat. And so the way that I like to think about it is the analogy of a casino. And so I think all of us are given a token when we're, you know, when we come of age and start to get into the game and we sit down at a table and we play and we play and we play and we play. And the players around the table are bragging about how, ch- how big their chips are. Some players win, some players lose, and more, more chips get stacked, right? But the difference between that casino and the casino of life is that at the end of the day, you leave the table with your chips still on it, and you don't cash out. And then everyone takes the chips that you had there. So you're playing a fake game with fake money. And so I think when you realize that like, you can buy a castle, you can buy a house, And there's a person in India who has no shoes, who has more joy in their life, you realize that none of the things that we do to accomplish serve any real meaning whatsoever. They really just act as the shovel that we use to dig the holes that we're going to fill back up at the end of the day when we die. And so it's like, what shovel do you want to use to dig your hole? And so I like to think of those things as what things do I inherently find joy in? And so for me, I enjoy learning and I learn through teaching. And so that is how I derive meaning. And the only thing that I can dedicate my life to that is eternal are things that will last past the physical plane, which are values. 
And so if you can shift your decision-making process from outcome-based decision-making process to value-based decision-making process, you'll always feel in alignment with your identity. And so for me, when I experience alignment between what I truly believe, what I say, and what I do, I feel like I'm acting in the way that I, that is in alignment with who I am. And so I think that a lot of us have made decisions or say things that are contrary to what we believe, or we do things that are contrary to what we say, we do things contrary to what we think, and we experience dissonance, and that's most of our lives. And so I think that if you can free yourself into thinking, I can, I believe these things to be true, I say them with certainty, and, I, and my life is a reflection of those things, which I believe to be, to be meaningful. And I can dedicate my life to that eternal value. And that value will exist after I die. And so that for me is, is, is kind of where I derive meaning from work. That was helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, that was real big. How have you defined your values though? You know, like, did you like sit on a stone and say like, I value integrity and courage and like, what does, what does that look like? And how does that play? I mean, obviously, if you do business, you're doing it with integrity and courage or whatever your values are. But like, how but you do may how not does, be. you, you may not be if you think about it. There's a lot of times where where we, we, we sacrifice, we cut a small corner, right? And so where we cut the small corners, a lot of times is not anything that anyone else would notice. It's just that we know it. Like you make the email campaign and you just know you didn't do your best. You just wanted to get it done, right? You made the ad and you didn't really go through the process that you know you should be going through, right? You made the, the VSL and you just tried to knock it out because it was on your to-do list rather than thinking like, I'm going to make this truly excellent. And so every time you do that, you live outside of the values that you have for yourself. And so I think that like you, you feel like you live in alignment when what you say to others about what you believe is actually what you do. And so, yes, sure. We all believe in being honest. Sure. We all believe in trying hard. Sure. We all believe in doing your best, but no one fucking does. Man, I outwork everyone. I was like, go to fucking China where they work six days a week, 12 hours a day. And that is their 40 hour work week. And tell me how hard you work. I work the weekend. Ooh, you're so hardcore, right? And then why is working even considered something that's laudable, right? Laudable. Like, why is it, why is that even anything? Because like, we're supposed to be doing things that we enjoy, that we derive meaning from. So why should we be lauded for doing things that we find joy, like that we derive joy from? Just interesting thoughts. But um, anyways, Michael, that's, um, that's my, that's my two cents on it. <laughs>